Holy moly, this SEO analysis decoded Chrome's chunking and embedding engines. You're going to learn a lot about Google's AI reading this. And there's an image shared. I decoded Chrome's internal semantic search, found the exact chunking mechanism, embedding logic, and am now able to browse, search, and cluster my own search history through decoded vector embeddings. This is an in-depth technical analysis of Chrome's history embeddings system based on Chromium source code and official Google documentation. So this is Chris Long sharing Dijon SEO's article inside Chrome Semantic Engine, a technical analysis of history embeddings. And the actual article isn't that long, but Chris Long's synthesis of it is great. And Chris is awesome and Dijon SEO is a legend. I've shared Dijon SEO's findings so much on this podcast. In fact, Google's May API leak last year, even before Rand Fishkin got a hold of that and shared it, Dijon SEO found out about it and warned Google about it and Google didn't do anything. And that's a crazy story in itself. But this is a cool thread from Chris Long on X. I haven't read it. I, I skimmed it and I read the beginning of it. And then I said, okay, this is cool. I'm going to read the rest of this and I'm going to do it on the podcast. Here it is. Chris Long continues. Dijon SEO analyzed Chrome internal search functionalities and found a gold mine of information related to the way that it processes, interprets, and analyzes web pages. Document chunker algorithm. This section breaks a given page down into quote unquote meaningful passages that can then be used for the LLM. There is notably a max words per aggregate passage parameter, which limits passages to only 200 words. Very interesting. And so then this is a quote from the article from Dijon SEO's article. And Dijon SEO is Dan Petrovic, for those who don't know, again, absolute legend. The passages, two key parameters control this process. Max words per aggregate passage, which defaults to 200 words, and greedily aggregate siblings nodes, which determines the aggregate strategy. A tree walking algorithm. This systems also process the content as it moves down the document tree and heavily relies on the semantic structure of the HTML. This means that well-formatted content, headings, bullets, lists, key value pairs are easier for the system to process. The document chunker, and this again, this is the passage now from the article, the document chunker operates through a recursive tree walking algorithm that processes the DOM structure of web pages. The algorithm respects the semantic structure of HTML documents aggregating content from related nodes while maintaining logical boundaries. So basically, it groups related pieces of content together in a meaningful way while still keeping different sections separate. There's also a max passages per page parameter of 30. That means Chrome can only extract up to 30 different passages on a given page, no matter how long the content is. This is the quote from the article from Dan Petrovic's article. Regardless of page length, Chrome will extract at most 30 semantic passages. All right, so before I continue, right after reading that, I took a look at the actual article. So I want to explain it. I want to explain this article a bit more. I wrote a bunch of notes and I'm reading from, from my notes now. All right, so Chrome's history embeddings, these are designed for your personal browsing history. The goal isn't to search the web, it's to help you rediscover what you've already seen, even if you don't remember exact keywords or titles. So for example, you're typing ice cream shop last week, which searches your local browsing history embeddings, not Google's global index. Chrome's embedding system processes pages on your device and stores embeddings in your history database. Chrome can take advantage of local context that Google search never sees, which sites you visited, how you structured your browsing session, your accessibility tree and DOM structure, which might differ from how the same page appears to a search crawler. Google search is about ranking the web for everybody. Chrome history embeddings are about organizing personal memory for individuals. Google seems to be testing on-device AI search assistance through Chrome. And this is part of a bigger trend, which is bringing AI closer to the edge, like lo local devices, instead of just only in the cloud. And then this gives Chrome a unique differentiator against competing browsers. Instead of just displaying the web, Chrome helps you make sense of what you have already seen. That's crazy. This is such a great, this was such a great article. So Chris Long's breakdown continues 
dynamic content. There's also a passage extraction delay, which allows the page to fully load before the passage extraction begins. That gives a little more leeway for dynamic content to render before the extraction happens. And then the embedding engine. Once passages are extracted, they're moved through Chrome's embedding services. Using Google's embedding models, the passages are converted into 1,540 word dimensional vector space. This is how the engine interprets meaning from the passages. This is a quote from the article. These vectors capture semantic meaning in a high dimensional space, enabling similarity searches that go beyond simple keyword matching. Quality control. The system then processes the embeddings through different layers of quality testing. This includes a search score threshold that measures whether or not the embedding is relevant enough for the actual output. Oh, that's cool. Chrome's embedding system includes multiple layers of quality control. The content visibility threshold parameter provides safety filtering, which the search score threshold determines which embeddings are considered sufficiently relevant for search results. There's intent classification. Chrome models also have an intent classifier which determines the way it forms a response. Depending on the intent of the queries, it will determine exactly how the system responds. Search intent, search intent, so important. So the article says, this classification system enables Chrome to provide more targeted responses. Navigation queries might prioritize exact page matches while exploratory queries might emphasize diverse results from multiple sources. Factual questions trigger the answer system while broad topic searches might present clustered results organized by theme or time period. All right, so takeaways for this, honestly, it's everything that I talk about on this podcast. If you've been listening to this show for a while, all of this should make a lot of sense. Google cares about intent. Google cares about clear, concise, straightforward writing. I wouldn't be surprised if we see more things like this, especially with Google's AI overviews, where the AI overview tries to give you a more personalized answer. But either way, I thought this was a cool article and a cool breakdown from Chris Long. Cool artic article from Dan Petrovic, Dijon SEO, and Chris Long. Chris Long's breakdown. And people have been asking for more technical episodes, so there you go. The link to this breakdown, to this X breakdown, will be in the description for this show, as will the link for Dijon SEO's article. And that is all for episode 781 of my daily digital marketing podcast, The Edward Show. 781 days in a row doing this crazy thing. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye now.